You know, some time ago, the Lord was talking to me about what he called regions of the Spirit. And he says, there are people that he brings into your life to give you access into certain regions of the Spirit as he does in the earth. Now, this is so important. Except and unless you recognize those that he brings into your life to help you get into those regions of the Spirit, you'll never get there. You'll never get there. And I thought, Lord, really? I said, oh, that's simple. You already know it. And I was excited. I already know it, praise God. And I thought, you know, Jesus, Jesus talked to his disciples about the Holy Spirit. And then he said to them, but you know him. He stopped them from asking, who is he? They would have asked, they would have said, Master, um, this Holy Spirit, who is he? He says, the world doesn't know him, the world can't know him, because the world don't see him. Why? The world relies on the senses. Yes. They cannot know him. So he says, but you know him. And they're like, okay. <laughs> so when the Lord said, you already know that, I thought, okay, that's true. Look at this. He says, I said, I've made you a watchman. Son of man, I've made you a watchman. If I say to the wicked, oh, wicked, if you don't turn away from your wickedness, you die in your sins. It says, if you don't warn the wicked to turn away from his unrighteousness, it says, he will die in his sin. But his blood I will require from your hands. Think about that. It says, if you don't warn the wicked to turn away from his wickedness, he will die in his sin. So God didn't say, if you don't want him, I'll rescue him myself. Right. No, he says, then he go die in his sin. But I hold you responsible. Yeah. So the regions of the spirit. And God raises someone to come into your life to give you access into that region. Now, if that one whom God has raised to give you access, if he doesn't do his job to give you access, you will not get there. And God will hold him responsible for your failure. He failed to help you get access, and he, you didn't get access, you're in trouble like the wicked, but God holds him responsible. What are we doing here? Or helping you get access into certain regions of the Spirit. Yes. Which if you never understand, you'll never be able to operate there. In the earth, there are people who God brings into your life. And they give you access to certain regions in the world. Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's whatever it is. God brings certain people into your life to give you access. In the spirit, it's exactly the same and even more important. <laughs> what we're doing here now is bringing you, giving you access by the spirit into regions that you would never have known about and probably never had access into to operate at that level by the Holy Ghost. This will help you. So today, think like this. It's training you in the life of righteousness. And you're going to give an offering to God. You're going to give an offering. You're going to give an offering. It's not something you're used to. Now, some of you, you're watching, you've never, had, you've never responded on a thing like this before. I mean, watching on television or on your, your computer or something. And then someone's talking about, you give an offering. It's not something you're used to, but you've got to learn it. Yes. You've got to learn it yes. because it will change your whole world. Yes. When people pray and they say, 
Oh God, I want an anointing of God in my life to do this and to do that. They're praying the wrong prayer. If you're a child of God, you're praying the wrong prayer to ask for an anointing. Right. You probably were never taught that, but this is the truth. What do you need? I'll tell you. It's called grace. What you need is increased grace. Increased grace. The Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 6, but he giveth more grace. You see, if, for example, you're given a certain measure of grace to operate at a certain level of life, you cannot, no matter what happens, if the grace granted you can only help you go this much, no matter what you do, no matter what's given to you, no matter what you come across, it's not going to work beyond that level. Right. You can go, you can, you can study what you want. That's the reason why you have very poor professors of universities, and they're poor. Then you have people who have a lot of money, but they're broke. Yeah. You say, how can a man be broke? He got a lot of money. You just said he had a, yeah, because money doesn't make you rich. Yeah. Money never makes you rich. Listen to this and listen hard. Money, there's no such thing as money. It exists in the mind of the poor. You know, I've said this so long, and most didn't get it for years. But today's world, there are lots of things happening to show that what I said all the time has been right. There's no such thing as money. It exists in the mind of the poor. It is the rich man's tool of controlling the poor. All right. Think about the cryptocurrencies of today. Mm. Think about the bitcoins and so on. Yeah. They're not money. That's They're right. numbers. That's right. the numbers. Why? Because they found out what I found out a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> they found out. They realized that that thing called money in your hands, it's foolish. There's no such thing as money. It's an identity. And once they broke into that level, some of them could understand because they were working with money all the time. And they knew, oh boy, all this thing is nonsense. They knew all the time. They knew all the time. So, wealth is based on wisdom. It is actually power. Power, the ability to influence, the ability to control, the ability to determine your life and your future and help others. Think about it. Look at your country. Who's controlling your country? Is it the man with the, with the most amount of money? No. It's a guy who has the power to influence the policies of the country. He's the one controlling your country. He might be the prime minister. He might be the president. He might be the guy behind whoever is there. Who's telling him what to do? <laughs> Whoever it is, somebody is controlling who probably doesn't have the most money. Mama. So what does God give you? The Bible says he gives to the one who's good before God, wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But he gives to the sinner travail of soul to gather and to heap up that he might leave it to the one that is good before hey. God. And Solomon said, this is vanity. It's vanity. So, but God teaches you how to come into the place of influence. How to come into the place of power. When he opens your eyes and you can see far beyond what others can see. He shows you what others cannot see. He helps you hear what others cannot hear. Remember this. Seeing. Hearing and knowing. These are abilities that God gives to you yes. beyond others. The ability to see what others cannot see. The ability to hear what others cannot hear. And the ability to know what they cannot know. Wow. The understanding heart. What they cannot know. Here is the power of influence. 
And God wants his children to have it. Yeah. If you have it, you will control money, you will control politics, you will control anything. You'll be in charge. You'll control anything. Doesn't matter what field, what walk of life. Here's what God is bringing you into by teaching you the life of righteousness. Oh, don't be satisfied. Don't be sa You know, some people say, um, if I just have enough for me and my family, I'm okay. You're not okay. That's the most selfish vision ever. Wow. How could you be that selfish? Wow. How could, if you can help five people, five children to go to school, five poor kids from wherever, five homeless people, thank God for it. But God then says, all right, now you've been doing it for five. I want to try 50. Yeah. 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 Always he raises the dike. Yes. 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 He doesn't want you to just stay in some yeah. corner and be satisfied with your quiet life. Quiet life. You're a child of God. You are a child of God. You're going to do more with your life. I said, discover Christ in you. That's the biggest thing you do for yourself. Discover Christ in you. When you discover Christ in you, your day will change. You would no longer be self-centered thinking about you. No, you'd be out there thinking about what to do for other people. And suddenly you are empowered. You start seeing that you're having what you never thought even existed. The kind of money you didn't realize existed will be coming to you. You say, how? You know, there's a guy... He said, uh, uh, I, I, I believe in what I've labored for. I'm not asking God to give me anything, but just to bless my work. I believe in the dignity of labor. I said, continue, you are a laborer. <laughs> continue. Ma, 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 ma. There's a difference between capital and labor. Go and find out what the difference is. Yep. Capital is in Ooh. control. Labor is the grinder. <laughs> I said, continue. That's where you, God chose to call him. He called him and said, I'll bless you and make you a blessing. When he blesses you, he makes you a blessing. Thank you viewers for watching. If you are blessed, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and endeavor to turn on your notification icon.